Okay, so stage one, young kid, no growth as yet. Stage six, see all the vertebrae have curved? That's a non-growing individual. Now, that could be a 12-year-old girl. Yeah? And I can tell you, kids, maybe not mentally, but physically are maturing much earlier than they ever used to. Who would agree with that? And I can tell you it's related to the food they eat, to the growth hormones that are injected into that food. Yeah? But by and large, um, stature is definitely increasing. I'm an orthodontist. Um, I get kids referred to me at all age. It's very rare now I get a 10, 11 year old girl that's not in permanent dentition. Right? So dentition is really not a guide as to when to treat as far as orthopedics. Um, standing height is not a guide. Cervical vertebrae is the key and it's evidence based. That paper I'm giving you is um, research reviewed, peer reviewed journal, all the criteria that we're discussing. This shows you the shape changes. So here the vertebrae are flat. They're getting square. Now, what do you need to know about this? Not now, but during treatment. Maximum growth of the mandible occurs between stage three and four. Maximum growth of the maxilla occurs at stage two. If you're at stage three, CVM3, you've missed the boat for a reversible face mask because the maxilla has had its maximum growth. So I'm going to link in why I want you to give me this clinically. Right now, all I want you is to understand you need this. So gone are the days where you say, Dr. Mahoney, I'm showing you this case. I took these x-rays before um, I did your course. Doesn't gel anymore. That case goes in the I don't care list. Got it? So after today, you will take new records. They'll be of a good standard and you will then show those cases to me. That's why in this course, I've allocated more time for theory, less time for looking at cases because I assume you wouldn't have the records up to the standard I want them. If you really want to get your values worth, course two, each of you bring two cases. That's 60 cases we look at together. You see the learning curve? You understand what I'm saying? Right? It doesn't take me long to look at a case, but it, what drains me, and I'm talking about drains me, is records. Honestly. When I ask you what is the vertical, and I don't see a Jefferson tracing, don't dare to open your mouth. Right? Now, you might think, well, what a taskmaster, but I'm doing this to help you. Because if you start on a good wicket, as the English saying says, you're going to get good results. Yeah? Remember, I don't own a supply company or a lab, so I'm more than happy to look at crap records and say, oh, you need this, this, and this. Why? Because the cash register is going ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Don't need the money. Yeah? But do want to have a good reputation as a teacher. My students are really, as far as I'm concerned, the creme of um, clinicians. And I know that because of the quality of the end results I see from other sort of people. To you to get to that level, you've got to understand and do exactly what I say. And the biggest debate I have with neophytes is quality of records. There's always some excuse. Like, uh, you know, they couldn't, I couldn't take models because they were gagging. Well, how the hell are you, going to, how are you going to start orthodontics in that case? You know, um, I couldn't um, take photographs because my camera flash wasn't working that day. I can write a book on um, excuses my students would give me for not having good records. Yeah? If you don't have good records, that's fine. You just lose your little opportunity to show the case to me until you do get good records. But then you're competing because the guys who've got the good records are already at the um, bonded hyrax coming out, braces going on stage. Really important. I, I'm, I'm laboring that point because I know what I'm in for. Okay, so how many malocclusions now? 54. How do I get to 54? Dichotomous key, three skeletal or class. 
Three dental, that's nine. Three vertical, that's 27. Growing or non-growing individuals, that's 54. So, you should be able to say to me, this is the exact wording that I want. Now, when you send a case to Rita, uh, she wants this wording as well. So you'll start all your discussions with me, yeah? All your cases with me, all your dialogue with Rita. The rest of your life, this will be your terminology. This is our language. You know, there's people here from Poland, uh, there's people here from Northern Ireland. Uh, you know, there's some people left here from England, I, I believe, you, you, yeah? Um, uh, but I don't care what language you speak in orthodontics, the language is this. Dental division, so yeah, I have a dental division two, skeletal 2B patient, low angle, CVM three. I would like to blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because if all you have is one diagnosis or just four, it's not going to work for all your cases. And I always quote Albert Einstein, obviously, who um, uh, had a uh, uh, man ahead of his time. He, unfortunately, died in a mental asylum. Um, and, of course, his definition of insanity was doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. And this is what I'm getting at. If everyone gets an upper Schwartz, lower Jackson appliance to start their treatment, that's wrong. If everyone has four bicuspids out to start their treatment, that's wrong. If everyone has four second molars out because that's the guru you follow, that's wrong. In my practice, I might take out a lower incisor for one patient. I might take out upper fours for another. I might do non-extraction for another. I might do four on the floor for the Bimax case, blah, blah, blah. But it all depends on the records.